Hey folks, if you've seen my last upload, then you'll know that I recently snapped up a nice little GTX 964GB, the OC edition from Gigabyte to be precise, and well, it managed to handily surpass the performance that I'd already seen when testing the 960 in its 2GB guys last year. Now, I always felt a little bit disappointed by that test, and with the performance seen on other Maxwell cards like the 970 and the GTX 980 Ti, which I use on a daily basis, the feeling that there was more from that GM206 GPU than I'd previously seen was always stuck in the back of my mind. So here we are at the start of a new year, and what better way to kick things off than by putting it up against what has really become the stalwart go-to budget card since its release at the end of 2016, the GTX 1050 Ti. But before we get cracking, remember to like, share and subscribe as well as comment on the content of the video. The aim is to always bring you lot the content that you want to see, so be sure to let me know what you think of it down below. Shameless self-plug done, and I don't think it would be a lie to say that when it comes to the GTX 1050 Ti, I always give it a pretty hard time, especially at the start of 2017 where the high prices just felt really unfair due to the cut down nature of the GPU at the heart of it. But at the same time, the humble little GTX 1050 Ti is the card that I've owned for the longest, and at the right price, and with the cheapest SKUs, it does present a compelling option even a year and a half after its release. Comparing the 964GB to the 1050 Ti, it throws up an interesting comparison of specs, especially since both cars are Gigabyte's OC models. The Maxwell based 28nm GM206 GPU at the heart of the 960 it eclipses the 40nm GP107 GPU in the 1050 Ti, in terms of raw silicon at least. With 8 SMs instead of 6, this gives us a core count of 1024 compared to 768, 64 TMUs instead of 48 on the 1050 Ti, but the same 32 ROPs. Both cards here feature 4GB of GDDR5 RAM on a 128-bit bus, and they've also both got their memory clocking in at around 7GHz effective speed. Core clocks though is where the Pascal GPU steps up the game. The 960 in its 4G OC form here comes with a base clock of 1190MHz and a boost clock of 1253. With the GTX 1050 Ti we get a base clock 126MHz higher than the 960 at 1316MHz and the boost clock comes in 177 MHz higher at 1430, aiming to make up for the deficit in cores by making each one of those cores work a little bit harder. Although, to be honest with you, it should be noted that with NVIDIA's GP boost technology, both cars consistently settled at higher clock speeds than their quoted maximum boosts, and that was even before we started overclocking. Coupling these two cards with the Core i5-4590, 8GB of VRAM and all the relevant Windows updates, I settled on 1920x1080 as the resolution and a higher on Ultra preset, with both anti-aliasing turned on and 16x anisotropic filtering, as this felt like a good level to aim at. For reference, memory usage in all these tests tests stayed below that 4GB max that we've got on these cards. So kicking things off, Battlefield 1 returned similar results for both the 960 and the 1050 Ti, both being highly playable and looking fantastic at these high settings. This was repeatable in both multiplayer and through some of the more intense single player missions. The GTX 964GB seemed to edge ahead of the 1050 Ti slightly, so I guess it's the slightest of wins to kick things off for the old Maxwell card here. Crisis 3 loves an Nvidia GPU so it's absolutely no surprise here that we see great returns from both cards. Here, the 1050 Ti takes a 1 FPS lead, which was repeatable over a few runs, but it's still not that much to shout home about. Good solid performance from both of these cards, though, at some pretty taxing settings. Wolfenstein 2 is a game that seemed to quickly fall off the radar of many gamers after the initial buzz had worn off, but it still proves to be a nice workout for both GPUs. Running at the high preset, the 960 takes a commanding lead over the 1050 Ti here, in the initial stages, with about a 5% gap between the two cards at stock clocks and on the average minimums we see a 9% gap. Getting the average lows so close to 60 FPS was great for the 960, and it did result in a playthrough that had less noticeable stutter than when playing through the same sections on the 1050 Ti. I mean, that's not to say that the 1050 Ti performed poorly, with averages of 64 FPS and the average minimums still being in the mid 50s. Pray now, and the 960 puts in another strong performance here, hitting almost 80 FPS on average. This was with SMAA 2TX anti-aliasing instead of the usual FX. XAA that I go to, and to be honest with you, the game looked and felt incredible. The 1050 Ti though is even more impressive, offering up averages in the mid 80s around the same 30 minute test section. A great example here of good game optimization and a hugely impressive showing for both these cards, keeping their 1% lows well above 60 FPS. Checking out Fallout 4 and ensuring the frame limiter was turned off, the GTX 1050 Ti 
again not just past the 960 in terms of average minimums, but it did struggle to hit 60 FPS on average. Still, both played near enough identical, and with a few tweaks in the options, a solid 60 FPS was achievable. Call of Duty World War II performed well on both cards with the new Pascal based card, taking a decent lead, averaging a solid 60 FPS with minimums tickling 50. The 960 was no slouch either, but with averages in the mid 50s and the average minimums in the mid 40s, it was a less smooth experience compared with the GTX 1050 Ti. In total contrast though, Rise of the Tomb Raider was a game which seemed to perform much better on the old Maxwell card, beating out the stock GTX 1050 Ti by 3 FPS on average and around 3 to 4 FPS on the average minimums. Not a huge difference by any means, and both cards, to be honest with you, played perfectly well at these high settings. So I guess normally at this point in the video, I would start to wrap things up, and I'd probably conclude that either card is going to be perfectly fine for a value-based 1080p gaming rig, but that's not the end of it here. The GTX 960 has got one more party trick up its sleeve, and that comes in the form of overclocking. The GTX 1050 Ti makes most sense in its cheapest form, expensive top-line models with their additional power connectors and big beefy coolers this stray far too close into higher tier card territory to make them worth thinking about, and even those at the lower end of the used market, it's probably got to be those with no additional PCIe power connectors. Which is absolutely perfect for any of you wanting a card to shove into their grand's old HP or Dell and get their game on. But when it comes to overclocking, with no additional power connectors, we quickly hit a wall. Offsetting the clocks by around 100 MHz was about as far as I could push the baby Pascal card before artifacting and crashes started occurring. But like when running the card straight out the box, GPU boost does its thing here, and the majority of time when it was overclocked, the GPU sat at around 1690 MHz, at around 66 degrees. Overclocking the memory though did prove to be effective, with a larger offset resulting in a memory speed of about 7.8 GHz effective. The GTX 960 on the other hand, with its additional 6-pin PCIe power connector, was able to achieve an offset of about 215 MHz, which resulted through GPU boost again with the clock speeds in the game settling in at around 1507 MHz, while the temperature stayed in the mid to high 60s. The memory here could also be overclocked, and we managed to settle in at an effective speed around 100MHz lower than the GTX 1050 Ti at 7.7GHz. So by decreasing the clock speed deficit between these two cards to around 12%, and taking into consideration the 33% extra cores available on the 960, we start to see some interesting things. Back to Battlefield 1, and we can see the performance gap starts to open up a bit on the overclocked Maxwell card. The overclocked 1050Ti does manage to overtake the stock 960 by a single point on average, while matching its average minimums, but it is the 960 that storms ahead here. In Crisis 3, overclocking the 960 yielded good gains, and even though the overclocks on the 1050Ti were certainly not as aggressive, once again, we've seen pretty similar results. When I tested the 2GB card last year, I commented that overclocking helped close the gap on the 1050Ti, but it still took the lead. And that's still the case, although the 1FPS difference could really be considered negligible here, and we could put it down to margin of error. At stock clocks, Prey proved to be a pretty convincing win for the 1050Ti. Overclocking both cars though returned pretty much identical results. If I was going to split hairs here, the 1050Ti was a few decimal points above 57fps, and the 960 a couple of decimal points below it, but to be within half of fps of each other was certainly was an interesting result. But if you're playing at these settings, there's no real need to overclock either cards to lock Prey to 60fps. Checking out Wolfenstein 2 again, and the overclock 1050Ti managed to reach 60fps on the average minimums. Now this slights the changes did actually help make the gameplay buttery smooth, and with the averages over 70fps, it comfortably beat out the GTX 960 at stock clocks. Overclocking the GTX 960 only helped to widen the gap though. But interestingly enough though, I didn't get much more on average with the return in 72fps, but it was the average minimums here, they jumped up to 64fps, and if you look at the chart, generally speaking the card which averages above 60fps, and has the least amount of discrepancy between the average and the average lows, is going to be the better feeling, and this was certainly the case here. In Fallout 4, overclocking really helped out the GTX 960, those extra cores helped propel it past the overclocked GTX 1050 Ti. 
with even the average minimums sitting in the mid 50s. Overclocking the 1050Ti pushed the average frame rate comfortably above 60fps, but the increase in minimums they were actually a tad disappointing here. At stock clocks, the GTX 1050Ti it performed much better in Call of Duty World War II. Overclocking the GTX 960, however, sees the older Maxwell card leapfrog the stock GTX 1050Ti. We see some good results overclocking the 1050Ti as well, matching the lows of the overclocked 960 and only being 2fps slower on average. Overclocking the 960 and Rise of the Tomb Raider shows impressive results, with the average minimums being closer to 50 FPS than 40, and the average frame rate settling comfortably in the mid 60s. Just like Fallout 4, overclocking the 1050 Ti did see the average frame rate jump up, but there was not such a big jump in the average minimums, leading to less fluid gameplay on the Pascal card. Again, this could simply be down to the 960 simply having much more compute power available to it, or even down to some external issues like driver optimization. So finally, wrapping things up, well, it's really hard to pick a winner here, both cards are great for what they are. If I was going to go purely statistical and look at performance so as an average of all games tested, the TI returns higher averages at stock clocks. So if you're not going to overclock, perhaps you've got an older PSU, then the 1050 TI is going to be the best bet for you. However, if you want to eke out as much performance as you can and you're happy moving a few sliders on MSI Afterburner, then the GTX 960 will offer you more performance. One thing to note though, is that both stock and overclocked, it was the GTX 960 that actually returned the better percentage low results. So it's horses for courses really. Two cards, two cards that perform great even today, and if you can pick one up in the used market cheaply, it's definitely got to bring a smile to your face. If you've endured this long, I'm just going to say thanks for watching, both cards perform really well, and with the mix of the right settings, either is going to prove to be a capable workhorse for your gaming rig, and it really was that close in all the tests. But again, thanks for watching, all I've left to say is take care, and I'll hopefully see you all in the comments section down below, and in the next video.